guys, this is Lisa, and I am back with another video for May May stamp sets. This month in October of 2018, her stamp set of the month is this one called Ginger Fred. It's so cute, right? Gingerbread Man, uh, Ginger and Fred Astaire, Ginger Fred. I thought that was really, really cute. But um, May May showed this on one of her videos last week on her stamp reveal, I believe. And um, everyone has been asking me about how I made this card, where it was kind of black and white and it goes to the center. I believe this is called a spotlight card because the spotlight shines in the center. So I wanted to kind of uh, recreate some of the major steps that I did for this card. So these are the most of the supplies that I use, and they all came from May May's store. Uh, this is new in her store. This is uh, from Brutus Monroe and Ken Oliver, but you can find this in the May May Made It store. It's called Color Burst, and it's powder color. So you can paint with it, you can sprinkle it and uh, spray water on it, and that's what makes it a color burst. But I'm going to be painting with it today. And so that's what made this really vibrant colors that you can see here, the little characters and on the candy. And the Distress inks you can also get from the May May store. This one's Pumice Stone and this is Tumbled Glass. That is what I used for these colors here, the actual spotlight and outside of the spotlight. And the other uh, major thing I use is just, I need something to draw a circle. And this is from a die set. And let me see how big this one is. This one is exactly three inches uh, circular. Okay, and uh, I use a fine tip water brush from Nuvo. And you can see a wink of Stella. I don't know if you can see some of the sparkles that are on there but there's some sparkles um, on the candy and the gingerbread men. And so let's get started. I will show you it's the major steps that I took to make this card. Okay, so off screen, I've got some distressed watercolor cardstock from Tim Holtz. You can also find this in the May May store. And that's the water, I mean, that's, excuse me, the paper that I used. And then, also off screen, I've just got a plastic palette and a ceramic palette. These are just the only two that I owned and I knew that I was gonna wanna do some color mixing. So I got that. And then I just have a bucket of water. All these things that go for the painting I got on sale with that 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. And this is just a cheap eyedropper water bottle. This also came from the art uh, section in Hobby Lobby. So first of all, we want to get our paint started here. So this is what I am going to do. I'm going to show you these really cool product color birds. Okay. And like May May said, this is a little messy, but it is fun. So just keep that in mind. So there's the yellow, as you can see, it's a powder and you do not need much, so this would last you a while. Okay, and this one's gonna be Marsala. It's kind of a purplish, that was pink or red, and yellow, and this one's Cornflower Blue. You can see there's some different uh, shades, crystals in there. It's really, really neat. This is gonna be an orange. And I also know to make this gingerbread color that I mixed some orange and some yellows. And this is a, a deep green called cabbage. And I'm gonna go back and get some of this red over here. So you can do your mixing this way or you can mix it once you've actually got uh, your water on top and rehydrate. So what I do is I take an eyedropper and I'm gonna start with one drop in each section. Isn't that beautiful? And see if I need to add any more than that. I use a popsicle stick for this just because I don't like to use a paintbrush to suck up the color and then have to try to rinse all that color out. off 
my popsicle stick here. So I definitely need, depending on how many, how much I had in there, you need about two drops, it would seem. And I'm bad about getting too close and sucking my, my color back up into the eyedropper, so just be careful of that. Oh, this is a beautiful red. I may need some more powder in that one, though, because I really want some really pretty red for that candy. I really want it to be beautiful and shiny, shiny, shiny. I think that's going to need some more orange, but we will see. So what I like to do is to take just some copy paper or a little bit thicker white paper, whatever you've got on hand, and then now we're just going to kind of experiment, play a little bit, and just kind of see what the colors look like. So here's the yellow. Oh, that blue is pretty. Hmm. It's kind of a brownish. Let's see. I wonder if I got some colors mixed in there. There's the green. Oh, that purple is really pretty. Let me see what I got with the red. Yeah, that red's really pretty. Go back to this. This yellow is really light, so I am going to put a little more powder in my yellow. And um, which one was that one? It looked kind of brownish. Let's see, that was blue and yellow and green. This is supposed to be some orange. I wonder if I cross-contaminate any of my water. That sure didn't look orange, did it? Still looks kind of brown. So that's okay, I'll put some over here. And actually I can use some brown for my popsicle sticks on the uh, candy. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Yeah, there's the orange I'm looking for, okay. So this one, I was trying to find me a color that kind of looks like uh, gingerbread. And that's pretty close. It's a really orangish red for this right here on the gingerbread, okay. So we'll just start playing and see what we get here. So what I did is I took the major pieces that I knew I wanted on my card and laid them out in the center. And I did put them on my Misty because I knew that I wanted to be able to stamp them two or three times if I needed to because uh, watercolor paper is really thick, right? And it's got some grooves in it. So a lot of times it doesn't stamp perfect the first time. And you can see I've pressed too hard on this one stamp, it's got that halo effect, but I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm not gonna waste this cute little sheet of paper. So that's how I got started. And then I laid my circle right in the center and drew the outline, if you can see that. There we go. So that's gonna tell me where I need uh, to actually paint inside and out. Okay. And then I'm gonna finish up my images. So what I did is I put a lot of those images on a, a block, and then I put one little image, which was the little bow tie, on a tiny block to kind of fill in. So what I'm gonna do now is take some black water, water, water soluble ink that plays well with uh, watercolors, and I'm just going to now stamp, and I want to make sure I stamp off the edge. That kind of looks like 
you know, pattern paper. So I went around and did that on all the sides to make sure it was totally covered. Just watched my spacing a little bit. And used my favorites as I went around. Oh, I got that one a little too close, but that's okay. And then I'd use these here so it doesn't overlap. And then I think I'll do one more on this side and then if I've got any big spots I want to cover up I'm going to use that little uh, bow tie. Okay I think I want a couple more. I don't think that completely covered that. And then here. Okay now I'm going to take my little bow tie Use it in a couple of spots to help fill in. I like to do this technique with something really small that helps to fill in the gaps. Very, very cute. Okay. So that's how I kind of created my background. And then I'm going to hit it with a heat gun and just make sure it's all nice and dry. started painting finally right so I'm gonna take my water brush and once again if I want to see the colors I could do this and say I really like that yellow so this is kind of uh, my test run what I did okay I really want I really like this vibrant yellow here and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we stay inside the circle with our color. So inside this circle here, we're gonna color our elements. And outside the circle, we're gonna do that gray look. And one thing about watercolor is you don't need to paint right next to each other or it will uh, run your colors together if they're still wet. So I'm going to be really careful. I was going to color that lollipop, but then I thought better of it because those colors would run into each other. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Look how beautiful that red is. It's very vibrant. This powder is really fun to play with. Okay, so now, let me see what kind of green this is. Okay, this was that foresty green. But you know, yellow and blue make green, right? So I'm going to put a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, and see if I can get a shade of green that I like. Or if it turns out to be like an aqua. Because I'm definitely an accountant by day. I've never been... An artist or gone to any type of art school just like to play okay this looks like it's gonna be more of an aqua I think oh that is a beautiful blue really really pretty so here's that blue we just made and the blue that straight blue that comes in the set is this color blue so that's kind of fun so this blue this is the one that came in the set I'm going to do here, this little bow tie, right? I'm gonna do dark around the edges. I'm gonna take most of that color off, and then I'm gonna pull some down here, just like that, so create some shading. And now that candy looks like it's basically dry. So now I'm gonna go here to this green. 
Oh, that was my blue. So I go to this, uh, this aqua bluish color. I think that will be pretty in this candy. go through here now and paint the rest of my shapes and we will get back together what I wanted to make sure of though is that I don't go outside the circle next let's see let's do some of this purplish and you can see I'm getting just the tip of this brush with color I don't want to soak it up the whole brush just like painting a wall you can see I'm hugging this circle that we outlined earlier I think I took all my color off that time okay make sure I only have a light color color in the center and I'm going to take just a tiny bit of color to kind of pull that color out and kind of shade that in the center okay you see that I'm going to work on my gingerbread man now and, and woman so Fred and Gingy so I'm going to work on her I'm going to make sure that I go right up to the edge of my line, but don't go over it. I like to work in small sections because it can look streaky quickly if you don't. I almost forgot what I was painting out of. Okay. And you don't have to worry about it being perfect. Some of this is going to be covered up by shading, some of it by other colors on the end. So I've got most of my coloring done on the inside of the circle that I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit it with my heat gun. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this light blue color in. Move this to the sides. And to do that, I'm going to use some Distress Ink. and tumbled glass. So I'm just taking a laminated sheet of paper, okay, and smooshing that on there. I'm gonna take one, two drops of water. Okay, and this time I am gonna use my brush. Get all this mixed in together there. Okay, and then get brush cleaned off so I don't have such a saturation of color in it and so now I'm going to see what this looks like yeah so now I'm going to start filling in this top circle to make this spotlight effect so I want it darker toward wherever the circle edges are and then kind of bring the color down and kind of fade out I'm trying not to touch 
actually touch the top of the pencil line because I want to erase it. And if you paint over it, it's just going to encase it, I guess, or bond it to the paper, for lack of a better term. And you're not going to be able to erase it. But in my last card, I did that in a few areas and it wasn't the end of the world. So this can look splotchy if you don't work in small areas. But I think that's okay too. I wasn't going for an elegant or professional look, right? Just a spotlight. So this is fun if you like to color. Oh. Yeah, I forgot the top of my bow there. I have to come back and put some color there. That is one reason why I definitely do not clean up your paints out of your palettes until you're totally done with your project because that's the type of stuff that happens to me. I looked and looked two or three times, but yeah, there it is. There's a piece I didn't do. And you see there's a couple of places I went outside the lines and once everything dries, I can use my white pen and clean that up. Okay, so now the inside of our piece is complete, and now we want to work on the outside to give it this uh, black and white or sepia look to it. And so I also used Distress Ink for that. This is in Pumice Stone. And I use this in three different um, concentrations. I'm gonna use it full strength to do the darkest areas and then I'm gonna water it down to use the lighter areas on the images, and then I'm gonna water it down even more to do the actual background. So, I think I've got more room on this side, so I'll turn this around. Let's make sure I'm still... So what I like to do is start on the edges, kind of where you think shadows might be. And I don't stick with that, but that's kind of the premise behind this, is using some shadows where you think those might hit. But really, I just like to paint and play. So just like if you were using this with color, you're gonna do darker areas and lighter areas. But this can be a little messier because it is supposed to be like out of focus, out of light. And it's just fun to me, fun. So if I'm off a little bit or darker or lighter, I do not worry about it. On my first attempt, I went a lot slower. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not necessary. So I think it's better to go slower on the color than it is this. Part of this here.
So now I'm going to hit it with the neat gun. So now that I've got it dry, I'm going to uh, try to erase as much of my pencil line as I can. And then I am going, I don't want to knock over my paint over here off the camera. Then I'm going to fill in the lighter shades on the outside of the circle. And what part that I can't erase, I'll just try to cover up with some more of this dark brown. Sometimes I forget that I'm not supposed to be coloring all of my pencil lines. So maybe three quarters of it came, came off. Let's see. So now I want to, uh, I'm going to put a little bit more color. I want to make sure I don't run out. And that's that pumice stone. And now on this run, I'm going to water it down using about three squirts, I think that was, or drops of water. Okay. Kind of stir this around and we'll see what color this makes. Should be pretty much lighter than what I had. Oops, got some color in there. It's not quite wide enough. I'm gonna add a lot more water to that. Let's see what shade I get. Okay, now we're talking. So now I'm gonna come back over my images and fill in with this lighter shade. So I'm going to water this down even more and get like a very, very pale shade to do the outline to finish up the spotlight effect. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush, get my little gingerbread man here, okay, and I'm going to go to painting. I'm going to start the edge of the circle and work my way out. So to finish this up, you can see I've done my, my light pumice stone all the way around. Now I've got my spotlight effect. And to finish this up, I took the sentiment, the best holiday memories are handmade, and I put it on a three quarters of an inch strip of vellum and taped it to the back before I put it on my card base. And if I did not mention it before, my card base is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and the um, watercolor paper is four and an eighth by four and an eighth, because I just wanted a tiny, tiny border. If you wanted uh, more of a border, you could do four by four. So I just added some finishing touches. I took my Wink of Stella to make sure I uh, 
Let's shake it really good. I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but it's very, very pretty in real life. So to the candy and anything that's supposed to be food related, I wanted to add some sparkle. So I'm going to clean off my brush after each color because it will pick that color up and transfer it. So I'll go ahead and do all my reds. And really, this is it. This is the card. Once you add your sentiment and put it on a four and a quarter by four and a color, four and a quarter base, you will be done. I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's something very different, right? It's not quick and easy. It is not difficult either, but it does take some time. I guess May May would consider this a make a fuss card, but I really liked doing it. If you like to color, I think you will like this technique. So if you do not have a color burst, feel free to try this in other mediums. But thanks for watching guys. If you have liked this video and this card, please give me a thumbs up and uh, follow me on Facebook and on my YouTube channel at Have Photos Will Scrapbook. Thanks guys.